Therese asked me anything uh, is actually a question we keep getting over and over and over. Uh, I'm, I'm going to kind of answer this because I've, I've already answered this several times. Uh, people keep asking us, of course, like the most generic and stupid question we get is, how do I get started? I don't know what to do. Well, uh, the last one comes from a 15 year old in high school. And we've gotten many questions that ask, you know, what do I do or how can I get started if I'm in high school or, or how can I get started if I'm 15? I, I think the, the, the whole, I guess the logistics around getting started can be kind of confusing because getting started has many meanings. I think we, we often misinterpret how we think of getting started. We typically look online or look at what others are doing and we figure if they already own businesses at X age or already building apps or doing this and that, then we as well should be doing these things by the same young age. And if we don't, then obviously we've made a mistake or, or there's something wrong with us. And I think what we forget to understand is that we're all brought up under different circumstances and we're all brought up with different levels of education and also different levels of exposure to different things while growing up. So we all get started with different baselines. We all get started with different thoughts behind, you know, how we think of entrepreneurship and how we think of self-employment and some of these things that are either more or less dominant in each other's households, right? The one thing that I think we need to understand is that no matter where you are, no matter who you are, no matter how... I guess, you know, intelligent you are, how exposed you are to people with, you know, more influence around entrepreneurship or around business. There's one thing that, that stays true for everybody and that it all starts with education. And what I mean is not you go to school and all that shit because it's pointless. What I'm talking about is it all starts with the self-education around certain topics. So the best way to start, especially when you don't know how to start, what to start or how to get into entrepreneurship is to start learning. Because the learning process starts when you're one, right? And some of those people that you see that are starting at 14 and kind of building apps, it's because they've been exposed to that self-education uh, because of great influences in their lives. And they've been fortunate enough to be in households where perhaps this was encouraged or they were kind of given some type of guideline early on where they didn't know what to do. And, and while, you know, that's great for us, that's great for some people, that, that sucks for others, it doesn't change the fact that everybody has their own circumstance and it just doesn't matter what people do or don't do. Uh, what matters is what's, what you're faced with at that moment when you're making a choice. And the choice you can make very early on is not to start figuring out how to build apps and all that crap when you have no interest in apps or to start learning how to make money when you really have no idea what you know even finance means, but rather start educating yourself. I think we rely on the education system way too much to teach us the baseline of survival and and just a baseline of how to work or live within a society that, that we, forget to, we, we forget that what, edu what formal education is teaching us is not how to be successful. Formal education is te it's teaching us how to survive within a society. Now, if you just want to become a survivor and you know, slave away for a few bucks so you can eat and have shelter, then yeah, you're in the right place. Continue to remain formally educated, you know, don't invest any type of time whatsoever in uh, self-educating yourself and you'll be fine. And at 40, you'll be able to survive. Uh, you'll have a crappy apartment, you know, you'll have a family that you can barely feed and you'll have to work every day to figure out what to do. But self-education, on the other hand, that's your ticket to your own success. And that self-education doesn't have to be you know, I know it has, it's about action and it's about doing, but doing can also mean learning. And so I definitely want you to think about that because you don't have to focus your whole life on just building and I have an idea and I'm bringing it to life. You can start with the idea that the best first idea is the one that you learn about. And so start kind of self-educating yourself on different things that may interest you so that eventually you can actually spark something within yourself and say, hey, this is good enough for me to learn more about or I'm interested enough in this to kind of pursue it to a degree. Uh, and then that's when the trial and error starts. I mean, you might get in the app business right up front, you know, really young and start coding, and you might realize coding is really not for you. You're not technical. I sucked at it. You know, I was a great artist, but I wasn't a really good coder or anything else. Or I've never even learned to code. So I knew, like, early on that this wasn't really for me. I wasn't the technology guy, right? But I knew that I was the leverage guy. I was good at leveraging people early on in my career, so self-educating myself on becoming a better leader was kind of like the main area of focus I had in my earlier days, right? Which led me to becoming more successful uh, later on, even in the field of IT without actually having any IT background. So again, self-education is key. 
And I guess, you know, very early on focusing on that instead of the, the uncontrollables that, you know, ideas don't come to you and so on and so forth is, uh, I think, the best place to start. All right, so the, today's question comes from Instagram and someone asked, do you have to put yourself at stake in order to succeed? Uh, the answer to